And we're live. Welcome back to Corona Geek, here where we talk all about mobile app development using Corona SDK. I'm your host, Charles McKeever. And today we're going to talk about hackathons, why you might want to participate in them, what uh, benefit there would be to doing that, and just uh, hackathons in general. So joining us today is Dr. Brian Burton from Ooh. Dan and Apple. Hey. Also joining us is Greg Pugh from uh, Pennsylvania. I always want to say Philadelphia, but not Philadelphia. Two hours north of Philly. Yeah, yeah. Going to also Jen Looper from Boston. Uh, Sergey Lurk from uh, Russia. Yes. Yeah, and uh, of course uh, we also have Alan here with us. Thanks for joining us, Alan. And we're trying to get Theo rushing, rushing on from uh, Washington. And we're having a little bit of problems, some technical issues. So hopefully we can get him on. He's going to tell us how his AT&T developer hackathon went. Um, he actually won $10,000 there. He and his team won $10,000. And you know we want to hear more about that and see how that went and, and see what his experience was at the event and kind of get some tips from him as well. So uh, before we get into that, though, give him a little bit of time to maybe get connected here. I want to remind you that if you didn't get a chance to see Corona Geek number 89, which was last week's show, do go back and check that out. We talked about Corona Analytics. We talked about uh, the OSnap selfie app. And we also talked about music apps that you can use to create game loops, uh, audio loops for your games. So uh, do go check that out. That was a, a great show. We had a lot of fun. Also, as a, an announcement, uh, Chris couldn't be here today. Chris is the developer of Coronium. But he said to, to pass along that Coronium Public Beta 1.7 has been released and include <laughs> and include sending HTML, email, oh I'm sorry, HTML, email, external network calls to talk to other APIs, recurring jobs, content template, templating, and lots of other fixes. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out, do be sure to go over to coronium.io where you can download a package for either Amazon Web Services or DigitalOcean if you prefer that. Uh, there's also docs are being updated uh, on the wiki and there's some video screencasts that will be released soon, but Chris has put, already, already put out lots of great material that can get you up and running. Um, I've actually gone through the material myself and if you are familiar with Amazon, uh, you can get up and running in about mm, three to five minutes. It's really, really super easy. And even if you're not familiar with Amazon Web Services, the, the hardest part We'll just be setting up your initial account, you know, creating your username, password, that sort of thing. Because Chris lines out everything in screenshots and gives you all the details that you need to know, so that you really don't have to think about anything. You just you can just go in and get it all set up. So it's a really great thing. Have you guys played with that at all, Coronium? I know, I know, uh, I know, uh, Brian. You just got out of uh, classes, so you probably yeah. It's on my summer to do list. I can't wait to jump list. into it. Yeah, right. I hear you. Exactly. What about you, Jen? What about you? Have you been playing with it? Uh, just just brushed the very, very, very surface of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's very easy to get on, and um, uh, it's it's really one of those things where once you get there, he's got all kind of code samples and stuff, and you can really start start playing with things. Uh, okay, so Theo says, he says, Charles, I'm sorry. For some reason, my connection here at work will not let me connect. I've tried many times to keep getting kicked out. So sorry about that, Theo. Sorry that you uh, can't be able to join us today. I guess I'll, I'll just reply to him here in just a second. But um, uh, so we won't be having him, I guess, on the show. So we'll probably spread out the conversation then amongst the rest of us who have either been to some sort of hackathon or event and, and just go from there. So the other thing that I wanted to mention is that... Um, uh, let's see here. Brian, uh, do you have any announcements that you want to talk about as far as books or apps or anything like that? Um, well, first of all, the, the learning mobile application and game development textbook um, is, is I'm, I'm finishing up the final chapter on that. I've been promising that for a while. Um, I'm adding in a whole bunch of material on Graphics 2.0. Now that the semester's over, I'm actually getting some actual serious time working on that, so uh, that, that will soon be updated. Uh, I hope to put out several updates to the other textbooks that I've written for Corona as well, so that'll soon be available. And am I still on? Yeah, you're still here. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody froze there for a second. I wasn't sure if I, I think we I think we were all trying. To, yeah, we were all trying to figure out what happened. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, finally the um, I, I've got two apps coming out this next week. Hopefully, it depends on how quickly they go through the stores. One's called Seablurb, um, and it's it's just a fun little casual game that I've been working on with my children, and then I've I'm helping co-publish a app that was created by a few students of mine, and they're very excited. It's called Five, Sin Five Second Frenzy. And as soon as those are out, I'll, I'll share the links to those. Oh, very cool. Do you, do you mind talking about the, uh, the, the, the blurb uh, issue? Oh, the yes. Well, I, originally we had decided on the name of Bubblefish for the game. Um, it, it, like I said, it's just a simple, casual game. We're using some uh, particle effects for bubbles, and so we thought, okay, we'll call it Bubblefish. You know, there's fish in an aquarium, and, and it seems great. Um, on when I initially checked the name, it was available. It was available through the uh, Google Play without any problem. And then, as I was finalizing all the materials through iTunes Connect this over the weekend it turned out that Bubblefish had been reserved by somebody else in the intervening months while I was working on the app, and I had not reserved the name. Oh. So, yeah, painful. I, I learned my mistake. To go ahead and reserve the name, even if it's not ready to publish. Um, so we changed the name to C Blurb. And, you know, just like Bubbles, you can't say Bubbles and be mad. Blurb, you can't say bur Blurb and be mad. So it's pretty <laughs> of Blurb. If it's not uh, reserved, you can still release with your name, but add something else to the name, like, well, cool game. I, I tried cool that. I, I tried that on the Bubblefish, and it, Apple just simply wouldn't allow it. So Which that's okay. We, we wanted our own unique IP, so we have it now. <laughs> there you go. You know, I, I, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this app. Um, it's the Flappy Smash. <laughs> Have, have you seen this? It, it's actually it's a it's it's the same theme. It's got the flappy bird, and except for the poles, um, the pylons actually smash together when you oh tap. My. So they come together. So your idea is that, or the the concept is that as the bird goes through the pylons, you're supposed to smash them together, and you're supposed to stop him from going, uh, crossing to the other side. And if he does cross to the other side, then that that's the end of the level, um, and then you know it's, everything starts all over again. And as you as you play. Uh, it adds birds, so it becomes m more and more complicated to you know to to keep them from from passing over. The genius part about it, I think, is that as you're tapping, inevitably one bird gets across the line, and then they immediately show an ad. And so, because you're you're you know, uh, frantically tapping, you wind up tapping on the ad. Oh. Yeah. And and so here's the thing. Here's the tie into the story. Is that it's the same graphics. It's Flappy Smash. I mean, it's 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 a it's a ripoff of Flappy Birds, even though it's not. You know, Flappy Birds is no longer in the store, uh, but it, the graphics, everything, and somehow that that got published. You know, it's a huh. uh, uh, Apple approved it. So sure. the, the, I think for a while they were stopping any Flappy anything. <laughs> right. Yeah, Flappy. It, it was kind of like art. You couldn't yeah, use art. Flappy. Uh, on the reviewer, some reviewers. I love it, some don't. Yeah. Another good flappy game is uh, Flappy Golf. Have you seen it? No, I haven't <laughs> seen Flappy Golf. <laughs> so this is actually a pretty cool game because uh, you play uh, as a golf ball and you try to fly to the hole <laughs> and it's a completely different experience than Flappy Bird, actually. Uh, it's a really That's cool game. I play it, you will like it. You see, now I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm I'm a fan of any any type of uh, even this Flappy Smash. You know, I think this Flappy Smash is a much better game than than the Flappy Bird thing. Uh, so any any time that you can take something and, and make it fun and interesting, I think that's you know definitely worth doing. Entertain me. That that's rule number one. Is entertain me. If you entertain me, you'll be successful. Right. Exactly. Definitely. So yeah. So the lesson there is be sure just because it. it it doesn't exist in one store. Doesn't mean it, it does or does not exist in another store. So right. be be careful about that. Um, and okay. start with Apple. <laughs> and start with Apple. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, yeah, exactly. Especially since their approval process is a lot more involved. Yes. Ha speaking of which, ha have you guys ever done that? Have you just just blatantly resubmitted your app to to see if you could get a different reviewer? I actually we just went through this for the past few months with my uh, day job because we made an app and uh, Apple said no, so we changed it. And Apple said no, so we tried it again, and they said no, so we actually called them, and they called us back, and they said, we want you to do something completely different. So we tried something else, and we called them again, and then they stopped returning our phone calls. So now we just submitted it, and we're waiting for, like, the fifth time. Yeah. So I had another so way around. So I have submitted my first game. It was uh, okay. Everything was fine. But I then I submitted... Um, exactly the same application, but free instead of paid, and it got rejected. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's really random. Yeah, which makes it a, a, a frustrating. Yeah. Um, for sure. I I I really wish that uh, they would go to more of a, a Google uh, model where you could, you know. Things are a little things were a little more automated than you would standardize things a little bit more, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Would that be a better process? You think? I mean, Google's the exception because like Kindle and Fuhu apps and um, Nook, they're very very tight. Like they'll like throw it back to you on a UI little issue or you know. So it's kind of the standard thing that they want their stores to be pristine. I guess we just have to live with it. I just wish the rules were standard and that they would be written yes. down. And then you wouldn't have to wait an entire different an entire week if you forgot, like like I did to submit your in-app purchase with your app. Like I, I just forgot to click the checkbox, and there goes a week. You know, like <laughs> like <a> vault. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems like like I said that that some of that could be automated. It seems like they should be able to. Yeah. Just, go, just go in. Yeah. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other announcements? Anybody else got anything they want to talk about? Uh, Roomalyzer is going to be updated hopefully soon on iOS, and it is already updated on um, Google, and it has two new fabulous packs that you can buy. One is to add houseplants to your room, and one is to add lighting. So this is um, a little test foray into in-app purchase and see how far we get. And I have some plans for the upcoming um, back-to-school season uh, given to me by Karam on the forums. He's like, why don't you do this? I'm not going to say what it is, but... Um, right. I think it'll be really fun. <laughs> is that is that in lieu of uh, ads, or is that? I mean, did you take out ads entirely? Uh, I still have ads, but you can turn them off with in-app purchase if you um, want to send your picture over email, and then um, you can use your lighting and your plant packs with a separate in-app purchase. So gotcha. it's kind of system where you just have lots of opportunities to <laughs> pass your pennies my way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I was talking uh, years ago. I was talking with somebody who uh, we were talking about online, you know, making money online and whatnot. And the person said to me, "said uh, Where where do people where can people give you money?" And I'm like, "What? What do you mean?" <laughs> He's like, "On your website, where can they give you money?" Uh, and it was one of those like, oh, "Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't think they can give me money on my website. That's a problem." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so making it easy as possible for people to give you money is uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> just something worth doing. Yeah. All right. Uh, anybody else? How's the uh, Fire TV Maddie Bear snack thing going there, Greg? Uh, yeah, I might as well say this actually on the air. Uh, the uh, Now I've been playing with the Fire TV for a week now, I'm actually getting really addicted to it, and I just received my second game controller in the mail. Because right now, if you buy a game controller, Amazon gives you $10 of Amazon coins and a uh, $7 game to play with it for free. And you could use those coins to buy other games like Grand Theft Auto, and then they'll give you another $23 to buy more games for buying other games. And uh, if you can integrate Game Circle into your Fire TV app, they'll give you like a few thousand coins to give out as a promotion so people can... You know, you can offer it to people, say, hey, buy my app, and I'll give you a dollar of Amazon coins. So that way they're getting the app for free, but you're still getting their money, and it gives them incentive to buy your other apps or spread it around among the uh, other developers. So they're so doing a pretty good job. So Amazon coins are transferable? You can... 
Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess the ones they give you as a developer, you can send them out to potential customers. Okay, so if you're a developer, then you can share those out. Well, that's yeah. cool. I really like their controller from Amazon. Is it uh, comfy? Uh, yeah, it's very similar to the uh, Xbox 360 controller. So I, I like it because I play Xbox, too. And, uh, and a lot of uh, apps I see, they're actually making it so if you don't have enough game controllers, you can download their free app on your iPhone or Android and use the screen as a touchscreen controller. So mm -hmm. you see, like, eight-person games, and all you just have to do is download their free app, and you can play on the Fire TV. Cool. Which well, I haven't figured that part out yet. I wonder if Amazon TV will compete with Ouya or similar devices, because it, Fire TV is not positioning themselves as a gaming device. So no. not sure how revenue on games would be compared to Ouya. Yeah, they are getting some higher-end games, uh, like Sonic the Hedgehog, that whole series on there, the entire Grand Theft Auto series, uh, You Don't Know Jack. So they are getting some bigger names, as well as just the indie developers, which is good, because I think having the bigger names will draw people to it, and then as developers, we can get our stuff out there as well. Cool. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think once... Uh, you know, the, Amazon definitely gets kudos for being kind of the first major brand to embrace that type of thing. Um, I know there's Google Chrome and the Chrome key or whatever, all those little other options are a little more tech oriented, but um, you know, I think once Apple comes out with something that will really help push things forward in that space. But we'll see. Yeah, for a hundred bucks, you know, it's worth picking up, especially if you buy all their games and controllers and stuff, they just keep giving you free money to buy more apps anyway, so... That's funny. Yeah, I, 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 w I would do it. I think I would do it. I, I mentioned this before, but we have an Xbox, so we already kind of have our portal into all those types of things. So I'm kind of like, well, I would do it. I'd buy a Fire TV for from a developer's perspective, but as a consumer, I've already got a box that does that. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that is it something that you could see being multiple boxes in multiple places? Like maybe you don't want to... Um, uh, you want to put one in the bedroom. You don't want to. You don't want to buy a whole another Xbox, but you'll put one of these Fire TVs in the bedroom. Yeah, and uh, since it's Android, you can put third-party uh, applications on it, like Firefox, XBMC, and stuff like. So that's kind of like the growing point. Like you can just use it for more what they intended it to. Whereas you know, Apple TV, especially the latest generations, is very closed off. Okay. So. So the question then, okay, so I'm just thinking out loud here. So the question is, like, with, with Apple and Google, you're pretty much on a platform that's going to be kind of on your phone, on your tablet, you know, maybe in your car, those types of things. But with Amazon, you're not – it's it's Android, but it's not Android. So do you think – you could see – could you see a time when if uh, Amazon came out with their own phone that they would be able to compete head-to-head -head with Apple and – Google on that in that Aren't space. Are they coming out with their own phone? Yeah, they have a couple coming out soon. Yeah, uh, yeah well, you know, but it's not here yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's it's kind of like it's rumor until it's real, all right? So. Right. <laughs> As there are rumors, Google will make their own game console. Kind of late to the party. Who's that? Amazon. Yeah. You think they're late to the party? Yeah. But it's kind of like Microsoft. They got money. They're, they, they they have very deep pockets, and if they want to make this happen, yeah, they can make well, this happen. Yeah, and 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 you know, here's the thing: is, is is that Amazon, the company, has distribution. I think this is the right. the really the really really important part to to remember. Apple does not have Apple doesn't have cloud in the sense of uh, like a, a a Google cloud or an Amazon cloud. Uh, and Microsoft Google. even has a cloud. Where are you at, Apple? Come on. <laughs> I, I know it. Yeah, tell me about it. And so uh, Google has the, the Play Store, and they have you know they have like all the pieces, but they don't they don't have the customer service. You know they don't have the human interaction with people. 
Right. Uh, not that Amazon has like, you know, a whole big face on it, but but it still has a customer service angle. Like if I if I buy something on Amazon and I don't like it, I just send it back. And I know for sure it's just it's done. As soon as it leaves my hands, it's done. I'm gonna get a credit for it, and I don't I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I don't you know when was the last time you called somebody at Google for something? You know what I mean? Like well, it is they don't have the same they don't have the same reach I think that Amazon has. So while Amazon is I agree. It's definitely kind of late to the game in, in some respects. I could see a time when they might be able to bridge that gap between phone and and home and you know tablet and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, something to think about. All right, something else to think about. Let's talk about uh, hackathons. So, who who all here has been to a hackathon? Who who who's participated in a hackathon? Yeah, Jen. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Brian, you actually hosted uh, the Global Game Jam down there in, in Abilene. So yeah, we've done it twice. So. How 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 was that uh, in terms of like being an organizer? Like, is it time intensive? Do you would you Google, recommend it to somebody? The Global Game Jam is really easy to organize. Um, they really have it streamlined. Other than making sure in our location, security in the building, and uh, food supplies and things like that, making sure that everybody can get in and access everything. That's my, once it's ready to go, I we launch and I get out of the way. How do they so, handle food supply? Well, we we've got uh, we, we provide snacks and drinks and things like that there in in the room for them. And then with a very short walking distance, there's also several restaurants and, and places if they want to get out and stretch their legs. Okay. Now, Jen, Jen how, what about your experience? You said you've done HackFit. How, how do they I, handle that kind of stuff? Yeah, so I have um, experience as a participant, as an organizer, and um, as a judge at HackFit. So I kind of approached it from from the two HackFits I've been to. That's been my experience. But um, sounds like... Hackfit is quite a bit more involved in that we provide, I don't know, like six meals or something like that, and they have to be like, um, they have to be healthy meals, we can't just feed them junk, so we have to, you know, the whole concept behind Hackfit is that it's a, um, a healthy experience, it's a something that promotes fitness and wellness, and um, we have certain rules that have to be followed, everyone needs to go to bed by 11.30, there's, so there's no coding through the night, <laughs> need your sleep. And um, we try to. Um, it's also very important to keep um, working out during um, during the, the hackathon, which is kind of our special sauce. Um, we grade our teams based on how much they've actually been active. So people are tweeting all during the weekend. You know, I just did 50 push-ups. Um, I just participated in a group workout, and then they get points, and that kind of counts towards their score in the end. So it's a little bit, it's a lot more structured as a hackathon, and that's kind of its specialness. <laughs> that's a, that's a that's uh, amazing because you know you already have a lot of things to deal with uh, coming up with a, you know you're given the concept and then you kind of or the theme and then you come up with your own app concept and then you go through all these these hurdles of working with people that maybe you've never worked with before. But you're saying that on top of that, you have to be physically active the entire weekend. Yeah, you do, and um, <laughs> if you expect to win. And what, what we found is that there's a strong correlation between the people who win and the amount of workouts that they completed. So the most active teams also happen to score the highest. It's, there's a real productivity boost there, and um, that's one of the things we're trying to promote as well. So it's kind of neat. <laughs> that is cool, yeah. yeah. So uh, how many? So tell us, if you, people who aren't familiar with HackFit, tell us like where it is and how, they, how do they get involved? Right, so our first um, HackFit was started in Boston um, last year, last September was the first one, and um, we had, it was a huge success, we had um, I think 175 to 200 people there, um, we had 15 or 20 teams that were formed, and the pitch, so pitch day on Sunday was really long and involved. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, we decided to branch out and we had um, HackFit in San Francisco, one in Philadelphia, um, and then we just did ours in Boston in April. And um, we couldn't do the one in New York City, but there's going to be one coming up in Boulder in September, Boulder, Colorado. So we are expanding and moving towards world domination. 
<laughs> so it sounds like it's in you know some of the main metropolitan areas where there's a lots of fitness, lots of activities going on, starting starting there. Right. Yeah. You need a good startup community. You need um, good co-working space, good corporate sponsorship, and a lot of um, fit and healthy people gotcha. who are interested in hooking up the fitness aspect towards tech. So that's kind of a specific thing. I mean, Boston's perfect because we have um, all these students running around, <laughs> literally. <laughs> so we have MIT and Harvard, and they were very heavily represented in our first um, our first hack fit. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And the so second one, we had a ton of people coming from um, the boot camps. Uh, General Assembly is one of our local boot camps teaching kids how to code, and they bought blocks and sent their students to do the hackathon. So. Oh, that's interesting. Demographic, yeah. That's interesting. So, so, so why, why in general? Okay, so let's talk about that for a minute. Why in general do people participate in a hackathon? Do you think? Um, I think a lot of people want to um, want to network. Um, I had never been attracted to go to a hackathon before, but this one really jumped out at me as something that because I do fitness apps, um, it was just a topic that really interested me. And I looked also at the participant list, and I didn't see. Uh, it completely male dominated, which was a huge thing for me. And there are hackathons now that are um, like women only hackathons, which I think is absolutely brilliant. That's going to be the next thing that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely going to those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So you think so? They, uh, Brian, what, what are you, what are the reasons that your students participated in hackathons? What's the what's the goal there? Well, first of all, the Global Game Jam happens at the end of January. Okay. And there's just not a lot happening at the end of January. The semester's gotten started. You're two or three weeks in. Uh, most of my the my students that participate, we also have the community participating, but my students that participate are also taking my game development course. And so this is a great opportunity to really get a long ways down the road on their game, work out any issues, and the students that participate usually have a functional game by the end of the semester. The students that don't participate, not always, no. <laughs> so do you think it's a certain type of personality? Do you guys think that, you know, that those people are more social or less social or more, I don't know, more competitive? Or You get all types. Yeah. I, I think, think it, it attracts all of them. Yeah, very collaborative people are attracted to it. And okay. the ones that want to show their pro that they got the, the stuff and programming chops show up as well to show off. Yeah. yeah. Do 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 you think along those lines? Do you think that you have to be an expert in something in order to participate, or can you just oh, have no. a base base level knowledge of something? Or how, no, how we've that got work? everything, uh, or everything. We got everybody showing up. The we've got artists. We've got uh, people that are more interested in a little bit more interested in the film side of. Do it working with it. Uh, we've got programmers. We've got uh, people that are just getting started and just want to experience making a game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had we had a lot of um, biz dev people, a lot of marketing people, um, mm. really all all types. And the, what you wanted to find is a good, well balanced team that had you know all of those aspects in it, but not like the teams that were exclusively developer oriented tended to. Tended to fail. It tended to fail during pitch uh, during pitch session on Sunday because they can't express why this thing is you know of any use whatsoever. Uh, that's an interesting point. Yeah, I never I never thought about the actual pitch uh, at the end. I, I wasn't sure. I, I we went to the San Francisco one for Corona and uh, uh, it seemed like a variety of different teams were there and you know, different presentations and whatnot. I never really took into account the actual who was going to pitch it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, you're you're absolutely right. It seemed like the uh, of the of the people who used Corona, it seemed like there was uh, more of the business type people were pitching than the developers. So that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. definitely. You need someone who can articulate, you know, um, because as a judge um, in the huddle room with all of these VC people that I was that were on my panel, we were asking, you know, would I invest in this? That was the number one, you know, Occam's razor. Would I invest in this thing? If not. You know, so um, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, there you go. So it's it's cute, but I wouldn't necessarily uh, put my yeah. money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, a personal preference goes into it too. I was very interested by one of the projects that was a, 
a dating site for fit people. So if you um, wanted to meet someone who, who had the same similar fitness interests as you, you know, you'd go to this get, it's called Get Duo, and they actually launched, and they have a lot of interest. <laughs> um, but one of the judges hates fit, hates dating sites, <laughs> so he's like, I'm not going to let a dating site win. So it's interesting, because I, I work in the dating space. That's that's my company, my, my day job. So <laughs> yeah. it was kind of an argument. But <laughs> I wonder how. So how do you, how do you how do you uh, connect uh, fitness people together? Do you like connect their Runkeeper c accounts together? Or, I mean, well, yeah, they were doing integrations with Fitbit because the thing about dating sites is it's easy to be a scammer or a spammer and to cheat. Right. But if you have someone's um, stats uh, from their Fitbit fed into uh, into the website, then you can just show you know yes, I went jogging for five miles today. <laughs> yes, right. I did the Ironman last week. So <laughs> that's that's the first thing I was thinking about. You know, some guy, you know, like a bucket of, a bucket of chicken wings. You know, putting a picture up there of himself with a you know six pack six pack of abs, thinking you yeah. know you know you know I'm a I'm really fit. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, you're going to be called out on that pretty quickly when you actually meet in person. I'm sure. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jen, you you mentioned earlier that you had cr created apps at these events. So, what kind of what kind of apps? Ah, uh, well, um, the the one I participated in last time we did, um, I hooked up with um, our biz dev guy was uh, Harvardian, and then this other guy from who knew everything there was to know about Google Google Glass, and he called himself Inspector Gadget, and he brought all his gadgets with him. And he's like, well, let's build something with this. So I was attracted to that because I like shiny things. So I joined that team, and we did um, My Perfect Form, uh, which is probably still live. But the idea was um, you take your Google Glass, and you can do remote coaching with someone um, from some expert from another um, area of the world. So you can show like that you're doing some kind of fitness activity, and your coach in real time can, um, can say, no, you've done this wrong. So we created this way to um, take video of your fitness session as well, and you can um, Put stops in the certain the coach could put, put annotate stops in certain points in the video and say you know here's where you need to you know raise yourself up further you need to you know lift higher so it was it was really um it was it was it was good but I think our biz dev uh, pitch wasn't so great so we finished kind of in the middle <laughs> the one who won was this incredible um, uh, solution he we did a we, there was a lot of hardware solutions in the last hack fit and he was this guy who created a way to um, take a pin that you would put into um, the weights that you lift. You know how you can stack the weights and you put a pin according to how heavy you want your weight to be. Mm -hmm. um, and he would be counting reps using that pin. So he had hooked it up to an Arduino. And um, so you'd take your personal pin, you'd stick it into the, into the weight stack, and then the pin would be able to count your reps as you're lifting. Um, it was really impressive. And he had the thing functioning by the end of the weekend. You know, it's incredible stuff. Um, oh, that's cool. So it's like it had like an accelerometer or something in it, some kind of way uh, to figure out. Yeah, some kind of way to count the pressure of the um, weight coming down. It was an amazing solution. I mean, this is what happens when you get MIT and Harvard at their hackathons. <laughs> so, um, but the one that won this time was called. Um, oh my gosh, I can't. I can never remember the name of this thing, but it allowed people to. It was a software solution, and it allowed people to meet up spontaneously. So it's called Spontraneous. And you could meet up with people and go and run, like in the park. I, I was nervous about it because I was thinking it's, it's stalker or central. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna go work out. Oh, I'll come. You know, Ugh. but um, they won. So less hardware, more software. This last hack bit, but it's all very very fun. And it all it hinges on the pitch. You know, can you convince us that you can make money off of this? And they did. <laughs> so it's very so good. When you're doing a pitch, I've always heard it said that you're supposed to relate it to something else that somebody can already has already got their mind wrapped around. So it's you know it's like it's like aliens, you know, it's like Jaws but with aliens. Yeah, this know, is Twitter for fit people. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, like the Get Duo, the matchmaking. We're like we're match for fit people. So it was you can clearly make that make that connection. Um, we had trouble with that because. With uh, my perfect form, we were competing with Coach Up and another one who already basically do remote coaching. Um, but we were s trying to pitch it more towards the personal fitness side of it. So I don't know. I don't. We weren't very successful. <laughs> so, so you when you don't have a, a correlation like that, you just make something up. You think then? Yeah, you can make something up. <laughs> 
Just, just make it make it sound interesting. Make it sound interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the second place winner at the last hack fit was he had um, the sob story down and got a lot of points for. It was a it was a tough. It was a tough pitch because he had had friends who had died of drug overdoses. So he created with his team a software solution to coach people after they've gone through rehab. And it was really very emotional. And he's by the end of his pitch, he's like, he's like almost in tears and saying, you know, if someone wants to take my GitHub repo, fix it up and launch it, be my guest, you know. So we we're like, all right, all right, second place. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he was very good though. That's awesome. So, uh, I know you're you're of um, an active person, and you're in Boston. And there's all these uh, you know tech things going on, stuff like that. How do you how do you find out about these things? I had found out about it on the jQuery meetup list. That's where they were posting it. Um, the the notices that like early registration was happening, get the early bird discount. When I see you know fit early bird registration discount, I'm on it. You know so. <laughs> Do you guys know? Do you guys know if there's like a central directory of of hackathons? I don't know. No. See, because uh, yeah, I'm always in like, my app like, that will be coming out so soon. Hackathon. <laughs> it just seems like uh, you know, uh, w there's all these great things going on, like uh, Ludum Dare or, or um, Dar, and, uh, and there's. Global Game Jam, and then there's uh, there's HackFit, and then there's Angel Hack, and there you know there's some big ones that you hear about, but then there there are other events that are not so big that would be great to be able to know that they're happening. It's almost like uh you know um, half marathons or marathons or 5Ks. You know if you if yeah. some if you don't already know somebody who's into that thing who tells you about it, sometimes you don't know what's happening until maybe the day of or maybe even the day after, and you're like oh well I would have totally gone to that. And also there's a website for game gyms. Oh, really? Okay. Where is it? Need to Google it. <laughs> just, just uh, Google what? Call it uh, game jam calendar. Yeah. Just a moment. Okay. At at the last Hackfit, uh, Justin went out. The, the the he's the organizer of Hackfit. He went out and did a ton of sidewalk chalking all over the Charles River, and we actually got a lot of people just like walking in off the street saying they wanted to join. Just uh, just off of uh, advertising on the sidewalk. Yeah, sidewalk truck, the cheapest ever advertising. <laughs> Actually, one of the guys on my team was like, "Oh yeah, I'm not even from around here, but I'll join." <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah, I went to uh, I, I I took Sergey's uh, recommendation, just put game jam calendar, uh, three words, and then I came to uh, compohub.net, c o m p o hub.net, and it says find game jams. Wow, look at that. Yeah. yeah. And there's a calendar, an actually well done calendar. Very nice. Yeah. So, so go check that out. Uh, we'll put a link in the show notes, of course. And there's what one game a month is on here. Um, Level up to 2014. Another one I won't say on the air because it's rude. <laughs> really? <laughs> there's, yeah. There's, yeah there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. So there's one there that. Uh, but yeah, some great stuff. Public domain jam. I wonder what that's about. Sounds kind of cool. And, and, and one of the things that I, uh, from my own personal experience of having gone to the Global Game Jam in San Francisco, one of the things I thought was interesting was that it's not just uh, programming, so to speak. I mean, it, it can be board games and things like that. So you, you can almost just concentrate on um, the game mechanics or the, the, the rules of the game. And, and then that can you know, later be translated into an app or into a piece of software or something, but uh, if you wanted to just go and join a team that was just going to put together a board game, that would, that's possible as well. So I thought that Actually, was pretty cool. Actually, they, they do that at the Boston Festival of Indie Games. So you might look at festivals, because a lot of them have a little um, extra... I don't know if any of the PAX festivals have a game jam associated to them, but I'll bet they do. And is that the festival, is that, was that like a hackathon or a game jam, or is that just like a... just it's like a showcase, so um, we have a whole bunch of local local developers, and it's sponsored by the MIT Game Lab, so they just everybody can go in there as long as you're registered, and they have the showcase, and then they have lectures, 
Um, I was speaking there the last time. They also have this game jam, and um, it's yeah, and they also do board games. That's so cool. yeah, look, the point is look at the festival calendar and see what there is. Yeah, there was there was one uh, group there that it was um, I think it was like a, a couple, and then this other lady kind of she just randomly just showed up, and then they they kind of all teamed together and they they spent this time, and they had a uh, uh, just construction paper and some clay, modeling clay, and they created this this whole game around cats and and they made like these little these little clay cats and as the game pieces, and they had some you know some dice and they. I, I I vaguely remember the rules of the game now, but at the time I was like, this would totally make a great game. You know, what I mean, you, you should I, I, you should open source this and like you know, because I don't think they actually wanted to pursue producing it. But I was like, you know, open source it and let other people make it into games. Who you know, it was it was pretty cool. Very fun. Yeah, one of the fun board kind of table games that they had at Boston Festival was this totally stupid idea. It was stacking ice. So they had a bowl of ice, and we'd be stacking it. It was like Jenga for like idiots. It was great, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's <Yeah>. funny. <laughs> that's, that's a game that uh, you have to play quickly, though. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Eventually, my fingers get really, really cold. <laughs> there, there is another website that was on the list of Google results here. It's called Game Jam Central, which is, you know makes complete sense as a, a calendar uh, of events. And it's got a whole bunch of upcoming game jams on here, regularly scheduled jams, so you know things that happen every year, uh, other events, and then previous game jams. So like if you miss something, you can go back and at least discover it. You know maybe maybe that's already passed, but you can go check out their website. Maybe follow them on Facebook and kind of keep up on when the next event is. I think that would be cool. Excellent. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. That's another good one. Yeah, so great. Very cool. Yeah, All wasn't, right. well, wasn't there a lady that you had on a couple uh, months ago who had a, um, she was the Canadian lady who did the one for girl um, for female figures? It was we are, we are gamers too or something like that, and she was doing a game jam. Yeah, let me let me Google that and see if I can find it because that's you're absolutely right. Um, I, I am a gamer. I am a gamer. I am a gamer. Yeah. I am a gamer. Oh, did you put yeah. it in the chat? You know, I am terrible with names, so I always forget. Uh, but yeah, I will put a link into that in the show notes, and we will go through and um, yeah, you can check, she, you can check that out. Yeah, she's an expert. She just organizes the game gems. So. And what's her name? Do you have it on there? It's IamAGamer.ca is the website. Um, you'll awesome. recognize it when you see it. It's got this really cool parallax scroll. Okay, <laughs> Def definitely. Okay, we'll, we'll put a link to that in the, in the show notes. So IamAGamer.ca. IamAGamer.ca. All right. And uh, any others we want to talk about before we kind of wrap things up? Oh, prizes. Let's talk about prizes. Cause, because that's a, I mean, that's a pretty significant thing, I think. Uh, we didn't... We weren't able to get Theo on, but like I said before in the beginning of the show, Theo uh, and his team won ten thousand dollars, which, you know, I, I don't think that I mean, there's no guarantee that you're going to win every event, uh, but that's a pretty good that's, that's a pretty good take, right? So, yeah, if you could do that, you know, um, I don't know yeah. if you could do that six times a year, you make a, <laughs> a you'd make somebody's salary. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know how common that is. That's just like that's a big corporation like paying some serious cash. Yeah, no, uh, true, true. I mean, that was that's AT and T. Uh, they were actually talking about uh, public safety and preparedness, and you know, it had a very specific niche and, and that sort of thing. So yeah, you, you really got to um, hit security or safety or or something like that. That type of hackathon to to walk away with some serious prize money. Or a corporate. Um, yeah, corporate. Yeah, we, uh, HackFit gives basically, I think, a $1,000 prize, and then second and third or 500 but you spread that among your team members, you know, in a team of six. <laughs> but um, I was actually judging for Microsoft, and because Microsoft had given a prize um, for the best um, Azure integration. Constant Contact did the same thing. They were the other corporate sponsor, and they, um, they were giving away... 
I think some kind of tangible physical software prize, but um, I was able to give like a license to something. Well, yeah, and, and that that has a it doesn't have a dollar value, but it does have a dollar value in some respects. I mean, there's like there's some great tools. Uh, I went to a MongoDB meetup, and one of the companies that was there was talking about their tool, and it looked fantastic. And and uh, I went and checked it out while we were sitting there, and it's a you know it's a five hundred dollar tool. So uh, I'm just now getting into MongoDB, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fork over five hundred dollars, but but the value that I saw on the screen for someone who works in that on a daily basis, you know, five hundred dollar uh, software license would be great. Oh yeah. yeah. So that kind of thing can be uh, just as good as well. And I don't know, you don't get taxed on software license, free software licenses, right? So you know, I mean, maybe that even has a better bonus because. Uh, you, I'd I'm not sure about that. You'd, you'd have to check with your tax Make accountant sure you on that. Check with your accountant. Yeah, okay. I've never won. Read the, font, the, the small print. But, yeah, I think you're still a... Uh, that, that could, you could be responsible for that. <laughs> you, ever see the, you ever see the YouTube video where the guy is... Uh, he stopped by a, a policeman, of course the policeman is somebody that they're shooting the video with, but he stopped by some policeman and, and, uh, and the policeman says, sir, do you know how fast you were going? And the guy goes, eee. And so every time, I, every time I hear something like that, I'm like, <laughs> Which if you're listening to this on the podcast, is it nearly as funny if you see my face. <laughs> All right, does anybody else have anything they want to talk about? About hackathons and why people should participate, or which one they should go to, or any of that kind of stuff. No. Be no. listening for hackathons in your local area. If you haven't done it, go do it once. It, it's a valuable experience. Uh, you could meet some great collaborative partners doing something like this to to help you on your next project. Very good. Very well said. Definitely. All right. With that with that being said, we will post all the links in the show notes. And once again. Congratulations to Theo and his team for winning ten thousand dollars. They uh, just so you guys know what they he did was basically they built two apps, which I think is is fantastic. It's in a in a forty eight hour period. Uh, one of the apps was enables users to quickly and silently send out a group SMS through Parse.com, which of course is our a fave around here, and um, and they used they did used uh, Parse, Cloud Code, and Twillow. So that was, I think, that interesting mix. And then the second app, the, I guess the companion app to that, it makes a, um, uh, basically, it shows a map view of all the users who have sent the SMS message. So I'm not really sure, I don't, I wish we could have got the on because I'm not really sure the application of that. I mean, can you guys think of how that would be used? It's like an Amber Alert, right? Is that is that kind of what we're saying? I think so, right? Because, or or if, or if your school is on lockdown, actually, um, and you need to send out notes to your parents quietly. <laughs> oh, that's a, you're very you're very right. That would be a, a p perfect uh, example of that. So there you go. And so the the people at the event thought that was great, and they thought it would be a, a huge benefit, especially the um, the judges that were there that were um, you know already like emergency personnel who worked in the field and saw these types of things, uh, need for these types of things. So. Uh, I think he's going to publish that out and make it available to everybody as well in the App Store. So Excellent. We'll get a link to that whenever he does. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it for this week. Uh, if you have a topic that you would like to discuss here on the show, send me an email, charles at coronalabs.com. I would be happy to talk with you about it. And if you have a product that you want to discuss or something that you think that the audience would be interested in, let us know, and we'd be happy to entertain that for sure. So... Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, just about anywhere that you think that we are. Just put in slash Corona Geek, and we were probably there. So thanks for being here, and we will talk to you next week, Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific. All right? Till then, have a great week, and happy coding. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.